In this lecture, we will be exploring some basic and background information about the formation of the art we now call Islamic. The location of the birthplace of Islam in present-day Saudi Arabia in the early 7th century CE can be viewed as significant when we realize the presence of two superpowers, the Persians and the Byzantines, as their wealthy, powerful, and influential neighbors that each had economic and political interest in the region. There is specific contextual information that we must consider. As you will read in your text, the imposing presence of these two powerful empires to the north and to the east, with their rich cultural heritage, was bound to leave its mark on the art and culture of the region long before Islam came about. There is, of course, the presence of the other two Abrahamic religions, Judaism and Christianity, from which Islam branched out, that provides us with a rich cultural religious context. In fact, because of the presence of many people from different backgrounds in and around Mecca, the city from which Prophet Muhammad came, there was a rich cultural diversity that one might argue had great impact on the formation of the art. The key issue to remember is that there are no instructions in any of the texts from Muslim holy scripture to records of the Prophet's tradition about the necessity of objects for devotional or religious purposes. Yet only within a century after the death of the Prophet, as scholars have identified, there is the birth of a distinct style of art that we now know as Islamic. The development of the distinct art within such a short period of time has been attributed as a cultural and philosophical and not religious necessity. Art has also been viewed as a source of pride within which, rather with which, Muslims identify. In the map, the Arabian Peninsula is seen wedged between the Byzantine-controlled regions of Asia Minor, Syria, and Palestine from the north and the Persian Empire to the east. The inhabitants of the Arabian Peninsula were also significant contributors to the art that was created. So essentially, there are three factors involved in the formation of the art. The Byzantine, which carried the Greco-Roman traditions, the Persian Sasanian, as well as pre-Islamic Arabs who had a very rich oral culture. There are features within the art of Islamic lands that we identify as Islamic but clearly come from pre-Islamic periods. One such example is the highly efficient and sturdy arch. While arch existed long before the Romans, they are the ones, meaning the Romans, are the ones who have been credited with achieving the highest potential in this element, or rather, of this element. In this image, note the arch at one of the gates to the city that the, that the uh, Etruscans, who lived in the Italian peninsula before the Romans, had built. By the time of the Byzantine Emperor Justinian, arch had become an essential part of impressively designed structures such as the Hagia Sophia or Holy Wisdom upon which large domes could rest. This example is particularly important in Islamic architecture since many later Ottoman structures were closely modeled, mo rather modeled after Hagia Sophia. The prominent court architect Sinan designed many structures for the Ottoman sultans. The Salimiye Mosque in Edirna, Turkey, is a great case in point. Its huge dome rests on a series of arches that allows for an excitingly large interior space. Another important example is the Dome of the Rock that also represents typical Byzantine architecture. It is no surprise then when we find out the Umayyad Caliph Abdul Malik brought the artists and architects who were trained in Byzantine style to complete his building program for the site. The use of grandiose arch in a building is also seen in this 19th century drawing of Tari Kasra, the palace of the Sassanid king, in the ancient city of Tessiphon. 
that is not far from present-day Baghdad in Iraq. The barrel vault extended from the A1 or the portal in this 1925 photo represents highly technical engineering knowledge. By the time the Abbasid came to power, following the fall of the Umayyads, because of their Persian connections, after all Persians are the ones who helped them gain power and overthrew the Umayyads, many Persian models were adopted. In this Abbasid palace of Jasir al Khagani, they emulated the Persian architecture of the previous example uh, that shows the use of high arched portals. Aside from architecture, the various motifs in surface decoration were also emulated from pre-Islamic artistic traditions. Look at these examples from Byzantine and possibly Central Asia that reflects the figurative modeled human head, the two dancers, and the mosaic work. The mosaic work that evolved from wall painting done during the Romans became a rich and luxurious method of decorating surfaces for the Umayyads, taking with it its similarities in style from its original inspiration. The side-by-side -side comparison between the two examples testify to this. There are more examples in additional images cited in your text and they are also found in the week two image f images uh, that I have uh, posted in Blackboard for you. The carved motif was another method to decorate a surface. In the example of carved stones from the Mashata Palace um, built by the Umayyads, we see an intricate design possibly inspired by textile that adorned the facade of this palace. While Umayyads were very keen on luxury and prestige, much of the work produced during their dynasty lacks originality. It is not until the time of the Abbasid that we see some innovative designs taking place in uh, the production of the art. One example is a series of abstract designs called Samara design because it was produced in Samara, Iraq. In this slide, note how the vegetation motifs have been simplified and abstracted in a way foreshadowing what will later become a hallmark of Islamic designs. It wasn't just the Byzantine and the Sasanians that played an important part in the formation of the Islamic art. We must not forget the pre-Islamic concepts and inhabitants of the region. There are some concepts such as haram, which is a Semitic term meaning holy or sacred, and others that already existed but later adopted by Muslims. Also, among the cultures existed in the region, there are a number of prominent tribes and cultures that were closely involved in what was going to take place culturally and politically after Islam. In this Islamic pre, rather pre-Islamic fresco, the Greek style of the figures and the grape motif are cl clearly Hellenistic. The map indicating the location of some of these pre-Islamic cultures reveals the strategic location with respect to the two superpowers. The two major ancient palace sites of the legendary al khwarnaq and Gumdan that were long lost but had survived in poetry during the advent of Islam are also marked in association with their respective culture. It is remarkable, however, to point out that alongside such powerful influences, one single example that focused all attention at the beginning of Islam was the cube house, which is attributed to Abraham and still standing in Mecca, known as Kaaba. You will read in the second part of this of your chapter one 
in your text the importance of this structure and the origin of Islam and you will become familiar with the connection between Islam and the other Abrahamic traditions.